In this video, I want to think about how the night sky changes uh, over the course of a year, how the Earth's position in its orbit around the sun affects what the night sky will look like. So this is a diagram that we had in one of our tutorial activities, and it was a little bit confusing uh, to pick out, to figure out what's going on. So first off, what are the things that we can tell from this diagram? Well, the first thing that we can decide is that this person is looking south. And we determine that exactly the same way we did for celestial sphere diagrams. We have right here the north pole of the Earth. I know it's the north pole because it's pointing towards the north star. So we have here the north pole of Earth. This person is looking away from the north pole. If you're looking away from north, then you are looking south. So I can tell from the diagram that this person is looking south. I can also tell that it is midnight. Here is the sun. Here is our person on the opposite side of Earth from the sun. That makes it midnight for this person. And I can also, with a little more effort, draw in the person's horizon and determine the east and west sides of the horizon. And this is really the part that's most difficult for this diagram is sketching the horizon and determining the east and west sides of the horizon. So I want to look at a little bit different way of drawing this diagram. So here on the left I have the diagram from the last page which I will call the 3D-ish diagram uh, and that's what really makes it a little complicated to look at is they're trying to show three dimensions. On the right hand here I have a two-dimensional version of the same diagram. So the diagram on the right here is basically looking down on above for this diagram. And so the information I lost in this picture on the right is I can't tell from the diagram that our person is looking south. I lost that one piece of information. But here's the sun. Here's our person clearly on the opposite side of Earth from the sun. So I can tell it is midnight for this person. I can draw in this person's horizon, so let me go ahead and add that. In this picture, it's a little easier to see that this is what the horizon would look like. If you want to draw the horizon right at the surface, you can do that. So here's the horizon drawn right at the surface of our little Earth there. Uh, whether you draw the horizon at the surface or at the middle, either one of those is okay. And down at the bottom here, I have this helpful note that says in this diagram, the direction the Earth is moving in its orbit tells us the east side of the horizon. So we have arrows here in our diagram showing us what direction the Earth orbits. orbits the Earth orbits the sun counterclockwise if we look down on it from above. So at this position where the Earth is right now, it would be moving down in this picture and down here is the east side of our horizon. Up here is the west side of our horizon. So on this diagram, on the 2D version, it's a little bit easier to draw the horizon and it's a little bit easier to think about which side of the horizon is east and which side is west once we do draw it. So let's go through a couple example questions of how to use this diagram. So if we can sketch the horizon then we should be able to figure out what the horizon diagram for our observer would look like. So this is showing what our observer would actually see looking out into the night sky. Taurus would be high in the sky, sort of straight, up, straight ahead in the south. Low towards the east would be Cancer. Low towards the west would be Pisces. If I look at our sketch over here, Taurus is clearly high in the sky. Cancer is over here towards the east horizon. Pisces is over here towards the west horizon. So if I can draw this sketch over here, if I can place our person and draw in the horizon, then I can figure out what this horizon diagram would look like, what our person will actually see. So a couple example questions. Here is our diagram for midnight. I want to think about what will the diagram look like for 6 a.m. the next day. So on this diagram, 
where would the Earth be, where would our observer be for 6 a.m. the day after this diagram is drawn. So pause the video and think about that for a moment. Hopefully you've had time to think about it. Let's go ahead and see what we get. So if it's the next day, the Earth will not have moved in its orbit any noticeable amount. So my Earth here is exactly the same point in its orbit as it was in this picture. The only thing that's happened is our Earth and our person have rotated. So our person rotated. The east side of our horizon rotates over to the right side. So here's the east side of our horizon, the west side of our horizon. Here is our person facing straight down for 6 a.m. So this is just like the Earth-Moon-Sun diagrams where we draw the observer at different points on Earth for different times of day. Here's our observer at 6 a.m. The sun is right on the eastern horizon starting to rise. And once I've drawn in this horizon diagram, I can see that at 6 a.m. Taurus is over here low on the western horizon. Cancer is pretty high in the sky. And we have a bunch of constellations over here with Scorpius and the Sun being right along the eastern horizon. It's not real important how many different constellations we see in this diagram. The thing I'm most interested in and that you want to focus most on is being able to figure out what's high in the sky. Cancer here looks highest above our person's head, most directly straight above our person's head, uh, and over towards the sides of our horizon we see Taurus on the west and Scorpius on the east. Those are the big ideas in this diagram. So let's keep moving for other questions. So here's midnight tonight. Where will the Earth be? Where will our observer be for midnight eight months for now? So again, pause the video and think about it for a moment. Okay, let's see what we get. So here is my Earth. So we have 12 constellations, 12 months in a year. So the constellation was here, lined up between the Sun and Taurus. One month later it would be lined with Gemini. Two months lined up with Cancer. Three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months. Eight months later it will lie between the line connecting our Sun and Capricornus. So here is our Sun, excuse me, here is our Earth eight months later. Again, the bright day side of Earth faces the Sun. The dark night side of Earth faces away from the Sun. If it's midnight, our observer should be on the dark side, facing away from the Sun. And we can draw in our horizon. So our horizon line, perpendicular to the Earth here. The sun is moving up and to the left, so over here is the east side of our horizon, over here is the west side. And once we've drawn this, I can see Aquarius will be low on the east side of my horizon diagram. Capricornus will be high near the middle. Scorpius will be low towards the west side, so I can draw those in. That's what our horizon diagram would look like for our observer. We could ask, if this is our diagram for tonight, how many months must the observer wait until Libra, this constellation, is highest in the sky at 9 a.m.? So let's step through how to answer a question like that. So first thing I'm going to draw, our Earth in the same location. I'm going to put our observer at the 9 a.m. position. So remember, the observer's head going down was 6 a.m. The observer's head facing the sun would be noon. So in between those two, that's our observer at 9 a.m. Draw in the east and west sides of our horizon. Draw a line out from our observer's head. So at 9 a.m. today, Virgo and Leo are a little to the east and a little to the west of highest in the sky.
at 9 a.m. So let's see, what about if we move our person forward one month? So here is a month later, and just like I was describing a minute ago, I should have a line going between the Sun and Gemini one month later. That's how I knew how far to hop our Earth over for one month. Our observer is still at 9 a.m. Observer's horizon. One month later, it looks like Virgo is highest in the sky at 9 a.m. We want Libra to be highest in the sky. So let's hop forward another month and see what we get. Move forward another month. So our Earth lines up on the line connecting the Sun and Cancer. Our observer at the 9 a.m. position. And now Libra is a little bit past highest in the sky, a little bit west of highest in the sky at 9 a.m. So, right, a month ago, Virgo was highest. This month, two months later, Libra is past being highest at 9 a.m. So I would say that our person here will have to wait about a month and a half to see Libra being highest in the sky at 9 a.m. Two months later, Libra is highest in the sky a little bit before 9 a.m., so about a month and a half after this diagram, our observer would see Libra highest in the sky at 9 a.m. So those are a few different types of questions that you could answer with a diagram like this.